States of America, and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. It's got a big crowd here tonight. Uh, snow is, is not an inducement for us to have a guest. Uh, <clears throat> tonight we have guests of the board, and number one on our list is Laura Moran. She's not here. She's not but here, but I told her I would kind of cover it for her. Sure, now. okay. So, Tess, go ahead. Okay, um, December 21st is the longest night of the year, and they, um, a group of people got an Arts Alliance grant to put on a project that engages people as a community. And so they chose on December 31st to light light up the dark, I guess, um, at the Calicoon Creek Park. And it will be honoring people who have passed this last year and babies who've been born. And they're having these handmade self-standing lanterns. Um, they're going to have stilt walkers, it looks like, and a little story. Um, and she has Total, uh, she has us covered under her insurance. So um, if it's okay that they do this on the 21st, it's about, um, let's see what time, 5 to 7 p.m. And then they're going to have Coco back at, at the way station. So yeah. um, that's on the 31st? The 21st. 21st. Which is not this, this Saturday. <coughs> oh, it's a Sunday. December 21st is a Sunday. Sunday before Christmas. Yeah, from so. 5 to 7, and um, they'd like to do it in the park. Also, this Friday and the following Friday, there'll be lantern making workshops um, happening at the way station. So, the people who want to get involved to commemorate the family members who have passed or new family members that have been born in the past year, they can participate in making these lanterns um, at the way station as well in Calicoon. So, just a little bit more information. In the yeah. <laughs> and for anybody that doesn't know where the way station is, it's the little tiny building next to the coal silos oh, on the lower the main the street. Scale house. The scale house. The scale house. The scale house. Earl house. Kinney's old scale house. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now we 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 uh, we did ask the lady for insurance, and she That's what I was just gave us a certificate. We already have it. Okay. It looks fine. I've got no problem with it. So can I get a red, somebody to move it? I'll so move it. Second. So in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. She did great. She's not even here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Am I making you nervous, Irene? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, have, uh, we have several guests tonight. Irene Nikolai. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. And she wants to talk to us about Dickens on the Delaware. Right. Um, brought some materials from the past. You, um, some of you may have heard about the Art Walk, which was the last big event, town-wide event, that we held in Calhoun. All the retailers participated, showing artwork, uh, new or vintage, in their stores. And this was a very successful event. I would say over 400 people came to Calhoun over the course of the evening. And we got a lot of press and publicity for Calicoon and its uh, businesses. So uh, riding on the success of that event, we came up with Dickens on the Delaware. Um, and it's nice because it's a theme related to Christmas and the holidays. And um, we're asking all of the shopkeepers and town folk to dress in Victorian costumes. Uh, which we will be renting. Uh, some theater groups in the area are lending us some. Uh, there will be performances throughout the day by NACL Theater, as well as uh, the Delaware Valley Opera. Um, a troupe of about 10 to 12 members will be performing outside from 2 to 2.45, and we have a full schedule of events that day. Um, so, um, you know, while we were preparing for the event, we had a consultant uh, come to Calicoon and give us some ideas on, you know, how to prepare the town in terms of the lighting and, you know, all of the retailers have uh, added white lights. We're adding welcome candles to all the second story windows, so it'll be really beautiful and look kind of Victorian. Uh, at the same time, we also added new lights to the big uh, tree in the middle of town, sort of by the train station. 
Um, Agway will be selling trees and wreaths uh, that day and on to Sunday. Um, so the event is from 12 to 7. Um, we have also gotten a request from most of the businesses that are in the business association to invite um, Shima Blue, Boo, who is, um, he creates these kind of fire logs that are artworks and they're, they self are, are they're very self-contained. They create a light as well as warmth. Um, they're pretty safe. Um, and this is what we're here to ask for to get approved, right? Okay, I don't, the date is what? 12? Uh, it's December Saturday. 13th, it's a Saturday. From, from 12 to seven. Right. That's uh, this coming Saturday. Yeah. Yes. And um, <coughs> the the uh, the business association is sponsoring this. Yes. And insurance certificate. We have send it to you. Okay. I know that we have their certificates from other. Uh, We've uh, issued so one for this event specifically. Good. Um, what's your pleasure? Make a motion. Yeah. Second. Can I move it? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Great. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> it passed anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. And um, at, at 4 o'clock on this Friday at my store, Calicoon Trading, uh, for anyone that would like to borrow or take pieces of costumes or accessories, you're welcome to, you know, take some costumes if you'd like to, you know, attend the event in costume. <laughs> yeah, so you know it's open to uh, anyone in, in the area. But you do have things going on <laughs> Sunday also. Ah. Oh right, yes, yes. Um, on Saturday, on Sunday, we're not asking the shopkeepers to stay dressed on Sunday, but that's like the main day, as like right. Dickens on Delaware. But uh, we also have the farmers market, and we've hired a horse and buggy who will be taking visitors from the farmers market to Cafe Divine and around town. Um, there's also a jazz performance by Kazare Jackson, a local musician, at the Calicoon Brewing Company from 12 to 3. We have a schedule that we're kind of working on this evening, so let me see. Oh, we have a local artisan holiday craft fair at Cafe Divine from 12 to 3 as well. So we have the farmer's market, the horse and buggy, and the artisans and jazz brunch on Sunday. <laughs> Don't want to leave that in the street. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, thank you very much. Great. Very exciting. Thank you. Yes, I hope everybody's going to come. Yeah. Well, the artwork was great. I mean, yeah. it really was amazing yeah, how many people. Yeah, the artwork was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe how many people came. So hopefully this will be as successful. Yes, definitely. And, you know, the idea for for creating these events and, you know, uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's an incredible amount of branding work that came into this, which is, you know, can be repeated year after year. So now we will actually have two major events that we can repeat and, you know, build on year after year with more costumes, more um, events and such. Um, for instance, um, Holly has a winter fest and they also have a lot of events, but they don't really have a central theme around theirs. Right. Thank you very much. Great. Good luck with it. Thank you. Tom, you're up. All right. Um, we all have copies. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a very warm yeah, we greeting to we you all. all. Have a copy of your report. Okay. A very warm greeting to you all on this uh, wintry evening. Um, I just want to give you a, uh, a brief report on the updated uh, agricultural and farmland protection plan. So the work on the plan has been completed and will be presented to the legislature on Thursday, December 18th, provided, uh, preceded by a public hearing at 145 in the legislative chambers. As I reported to you previously, we had some really good consultants and the product is a very solid improvement over the 1999 version. It has a wealth of data, over 100 pages, and another 96 pages of 
appendices. Um, everything you ever wanted to know about agriculture in Sullivan County. Uh, not only all the data on what's going on, but also substantive analyses uh, of strengths and weaknesses, problems and opportunities, and most importantly, the wide array of existing programs and resources that can be tapped into. You can download this plan at uh, www.sullivan.ny.us with a capital S for Sullivan, no other caps, or www.planningbetterplaces.com slash Sullivan, uh, planning better places, one word, and no caps. Or you can request copies from the planning department at the government center in Monticello. And by the way, the consultants acknowledge building on the four municipal agriculture and farmland protection plans including our towns, and they suggested that the county's plan be incorporated into the county's strategic economic development plan the way our towns is to our master plan. I will not go through the wealth of fascinating material in the plan, uh, but just cut through the chase to the most important part. Uh, six priority um, initiatives were identified. Number one, building capacity, organization, and collaboration, which basically is building on what's already been done and more effective coordination between the various governmental agencies and non-governmental groups involved in order to avoid duplication and provide a more focused approach. A recommended action step is to establish an advisory task force to provide leadership in this effort and I'll come back to this task force, which is also tasked with the implementation of the other priority initiatives, because uh, this task force holds the key to making this plan succeed in a way that previous plans have not. Second priority initiative, an agriculture business retention and expansion program. The idea here is to provide a framework for communicating directly with farmers to increase their awareness of available resources, improve profitability, and solve problems. Central to the success of this program is the creation of a position of coordinator or navigator with a staff. This individual will visit farmers and work with them to provide assistance and referral of resources in such areas as business planning, marketing, value-added processing and diversification. The coordinator is also tasked to see that the other priority initiatives are carried out and he or she will act as a spokesperson or advocate for agriculture in Sullivan County. Number three priority initiative is agro-tourism enhancement and that is basically to promote and develop farm-based tourism <coughs> whose huge potential has not been sufficiently tapped into. Number four priority initiative is a new and young farmers program to promote and reinforce the growing trend of new farmers, helping them identify resources, marketing opportunities, available land, and so forth. Fifth priority initiative uh, is a value added and diversification program to build on existing initiatives like the Red Meat Processing Facility and the Cooperative Extensions Entrepreneurial and Teaching Kitchen and offer training and assistance to encourage new efforts. And the sixth and, uh, priority initiative is a by local uh, initiative to improve local sales and demand for fresh local foods. Now, these are all lofty and very worthwhile goals. But as I've said previously, seeing them come about is another matter entirely. I'm happy to report that this plan does address that problem. We are calling for the establishment of an advisory task force as an integral part of the plan to see to its implementation. It should consist of representatives of organizations that support agriculture, like the Agricultural Advisory Board that I'm on, the Cornell Cooperative Extension, Farm Network, and the county's planning, and also uh, 
organizations that have the resources and the wherewithal to make things happen, uh, like the county planning department, IDA, the partnership. Uh, their main job is going to be to see to it that the coordinator for the agriculture business retention and expansion program is adequately funded and has a staff to draw on. This position and the staff to carry it out is going to be absolutely key to making the agriculture uh, and farmland protection plan a success. I don't have to tell you that this is not going to be an easy sell to the legislature. It will only happen if they feel enough pressure. So I urge you all to come to the public hearing at 145 at the legislative chambers on Thursday, December 18th, that's not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, to impress upon the legislature how key agriculture is to our county's economy and how important this agriculture business retention and expansion plan is to realizing its full potential. So any, any questions or would you like me to amplify on something I've touched on? Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Uh, it's, it's, it's I, I hope Thursday. to see you all on the 18th. This coming Thursday? No, it's on the 18th. A week, I mean, yeah, a week, a week from Thursday. tomorrow. A week, uh, uh, yes, a week away. Tom, what's the status of the red meat plant? <laughs> I've, I've That's heard a good question. Is, uh, is anything, I mean, have they broken ground on that or is. No, that's been talked about. I know, which is not a hell of a lot. Are you They're still the, looking yeah. to fill the uh, to, to fill a position for someone who can can run it and make it work. I, I, I heard that at least a month or maybe two months ago, and I haven't heard anything since. I mean, the facility is there. Oh, it's they're, built. they're waiting to get it going. I mean, it's, I I don't no, know. It's, it's not there. The, the building is coming in. Um, Soon, before the end of the year, the building yeah, but is coming in, and, and then they're going to set it up. And uh, it seems I don't know. I don't know really what's going on, but from what I understand, it's all pretty much up in the air, <laughs> waiting for for someone to really take it, take charge, and make it go. Well, the, the construction's not complete, but it, it it'll be complete pretty quick, I guess. Uh, Whereabouts is that? It's. Uh, do you know where the Liberty uh, sewer treatment plant is? You go through Liberty, South End, past South End Auto Parts, where the, tra the traffic circles are. Yeah, right. You except go up off to the right. you walk to the right there and, and okay. And go toward 17. Th this is <coughs> this is on you know you would drive past the <coughs> the sewer treatment plant and go up the hill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, okay, I need somebody uh, 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 to accept to move accept the minutes from the last meeting. So moved. Second by Cindy. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Uh, Jim's not here. Huh? I thought he was going to be here. Did he say something to you today? No. No. Well, you know, uh, you know, Fremont has this. He might be tied up up there. Yeah. If he comes in before the meeting's over, we'll. <clears throat> uh, Tess, how about your report? Mine's quick. <clears throat> November receipts totaled $1,842 with $1,834 turned over to the supervisor. Of that, $1,666 was building fees. That's it. Okay. Um, thank you, Tess. Uh, next is, is uh, Superintendent of Highways, and he's not here, as usual. Assessors. Uh, are they here? Nobody's here from the assessor's office either. Uh, the only I could probably report a little other than the fact that they they are moving along with the with the redial and they're, they're pretty much done with all the residential and they're uh, now working on the commercial uh, properties in the town. Uh, probably the toughest part of the job is the you know there's not as many but this <laughs> man is the hardest thing to come to agreement with. Grants coordinator, um, uh, Tara's not here. Uh, we, I don't know. We're in the process. We're in the process, yeah. We're in the process. It looks like we got a, no, I shouldn't say that. 
We're in the process <laughs> of, of, applying. Of, 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 of uh, getting a grant to, to do upper Main Street sidewalks. And uh, we, uh, we, the town engineer has stopped by up there. I don't know if he's, he hasn't developed a full plan, but sometime this spring, hopefully, we'll get the grant and we'll finish the sidewalks in the village. In the past, do you know that the lower Main Street was done mm -hmm. some right. years ago? And the upper Main Street from uh, what we refer to in the old days as Davis's, now it's sidetracks, to, yeah. to the Western Hotel. You're stepping back away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and then there's a few other ancillary things. There's a, there's a drainage ditch that, that's kind of a hazard right there off the corner of the, uh, yeah. of the Western. And uh, we, it looks like it's it's going good. So, yeah, sure. It's in front of Irene, our, Irene's It'll be building. In front of her building as well. Needs to be done. So, uh, this, you know, the, the truth is that as far, <laughs> that part of town, I mean, this, the sidewalks are worse than they were. It's just that I guess there were more stores and more people that wanted them down below. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't here then, so. Uh, in any case, we, we should have that done. Now, uh, we have nobody from the California Jenny. Park. Jenny, you're here. Well, um, yeah, um, nothing to report, no gardening. I mean, it's great to hear that about the event coming up there. Yeah. It's always good to hear about the park being used. Okay. Um, I, you drove four hours for this, so <laughs> you're up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lie. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, we did um, some interesting stuff. You know, we did a little bit more research, you know, and uh, so that's basically where we're at uh, right now. We We've done a lot of research and we've come up with a lot more decisive facts that uh, are very relevant. So I'm just going to read what I wrote here and if you have any questions just let me know. Uh, during the past month we've accomplished the following uh, progress. As a result of the Energy Committee's meeting <coughs> with Assemblymember Aileen Gunther, she's putting together a round table to include town supervisors, NYSERDA, NYSEC, and county officials to address the solar implementation in our state. Because of the holidays this is uh, most likely to occur after the new year. I spoke with uh, Rick Kaufman, he's the manager of Interconnect uh, in the Electric Transmission Services at NYSEC, who clarified many issues regarding remote net metering feasibility and requirements. The town of Delaware, town of Delaware qualifies for remote net metering. Uh, if you recall last, uh, last month we weren't sure because we thought that there had to be a minimum in terms of um, uh, distance from something that we, you know, we went over some detail and that's not relevant for this town. Okay. Uh, as we found out, uh, this particular fellow is uh, uh, higher up and he was able to ascertain precisely that. Uh, he gave me qualifica qualifications for remote net metering. We fulfilled all the qualifications without getting into a whole bunch of details, but we fulfill it all. So that's really a good thing. So, uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, so, <coughs> We qualify for the remote net metering. We may need a service upgrade depending upon our uh, usage, which we have not um, <coughs> in full received yet from your office. Oh, you can strike that. We got that. Too. And I got all the copies. We have all. <laughs> so we have all that. Uh, I wanted to strike that. I didn't. Must have missed that. Uh, but anyway, we haven't established exactly what the full usage is yet. So uh, you know, I'm not able to give him uh, exactly what we have right now. Uh, and then he could probably figure it out. But uh, we meet all the qualifications. His response is as follows regarding a possible service upgrade, costs covered by the service <coughs> solar provider. Uh, if you, shown below is a response uh, from our distribution planner. It's a highly technical uh, thing that was outlined, uh, that was uh, highlighted in yellow. I gave, uh, actually on your copy, it's not yellow, I don't think yours was in color, but I brought a bunch of copies up, I got here a little late but it's in yellow and it's uh, the state group 17B. And it basically uh, talks about the idea of three phase uh, if it's over and above uh, the tw 20 kilowatt. I think we're over 20 kilowatts a month, but I'm not, sh I, I'm pretty sure we are, but I haven't actually, seeing I just got a lot of the figures today, I haven't figured out precisely. But um, anyway, uh, at the end, uh, when I talked to him, when I uh, got some more information from him again, it, he said, if you're going to install generation greater than 20 kilowatts, you will need to have three phase extended to the site. So in other words, we may or may not have a, an interconnect that's right here that would be serviceable to us. So we just have to find that out. 
Uh, in fact, I think that would be covered by the installer. But it's it's interesting to know if if we can do it and what has to what's it what's it uh, what does it entail? Just a, like another detail, but it's good to know all these details so that when people come in, we kind of know what's going on. Uh, so anyway, uh, I can now address the question of a new service drop uh, with the newly received. Uh, data regarding the usage, so I'm going to uh, give all that to, uh, I'm going to talk about that with him and see what he has to say about that. Plus, uh, when we, uh, when it's ascertained exactly how big the system, big or small the system needs to be, we may need less than what we're using now. Obviously, we probably will, because we would be changing it, we would be doing some upgrades. So, uh, we would use less. So we, you know, it's, it's a little balancing act right there. We have to see what we use see what we're going to use, and uh, uh, we could probably come up with a figure. But that this particular aspect of it happens way down the line, but we're just planning everything out so that we know what we have to do. Uh, uh, number three, the River Reporter ran a story in the November 20th to 26th issue that the town of Delaware is exploring solar for their municipality. Uh, they inaccur inaccurately reported that NYSERDA program ends uh, hmm. Uh, the end of this year, which it does not. Also, NYSERDA does not offer reduced energy rates solely for moving to solar. Uh, that was very inaccurate, as it's stated in the piece. Savings are established as a result of a combination of the lowering of consumption of needs, less usage, uh, net metering coupled with solar installation, not necessarily from a reduced rate. Uh, okay, and, and number four, the Energy Committee had two meetings with SASD, that's the Sullivan Alliance for Sustainable development, as you probably know, and clarified some key issues, some of which are stated below. The first step is to analyze the energy usage and the dollar figures in kilowatt hours and the gas usage uh, in dollar figures as well from the town of Delaware. Uh, I just wanted to find out, do, we don't have any u uh, oil heating anywhere in the, in the municipal buildings. Right? In it's all gas. Barn, yeah. the the highway highway in the where? The highway barn. But like, there's no way you'll make that highway barn energy efficient. So, um, right. It doesn't even apply really with that. Okay. But I, it, it would be good just to have the usage because I've got to, because it's going to use, it's just a good thing to have it for the, the energy. The energy, yeah. It's just, it's just good to have it for the energy audit because they want to, they're going to look at everything. So if I yeah, so I'll talk about well, that. Sure yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, I just I didn't know. Isaac was talking to Lillian about it. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I just wanted to clarify that because I thought uh, it was just propane. <coughs> so I just wanted to it's ask. Propane here. Yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Nicerta pays fifty percent of the audit. This is a flex tech flex flex tech audit uh, where they do a conclusive assessment of our energy usage and proposed savings. Uh, that is gained through solar installation. This includes upgrades that, that significantly ensure dramatic reduction in energy use. This audit opens the door to get additional funding for any upgrades on top of the energy savings already enjoyed by the reduction in energy usage from the solar ins installation. So it's uh, that on top of the, uh, saving, uh, the savings from the uh, installation of solar. So this is a very good thing. It also allows us to realize the lower need for energy resulting in a reduced size system that will ultimately be installed. The cost of solar is so much lower than the cost of gas or oil. There are incentives for technical work available. Look for the consolidated funding application. This is for the flex text uh, audit uh, to apply. We recommend a resolution from the town of Delaware this evening to apply for the flex tech audit. You try to say that fast. <laughs> that doesn't work. Necessary for all aspects of the solar installation. It augments the Climate, sp climate Smart Community and Cl Climate Action Pledge, and of course, essential for all incentives for funding from any and all revenue sources. NYSERDA has an, an existing programs website that spells out most efficient equipment. Uh, an audit is essential to analyze and read any incentives offered by NYSERDA. Uh, and uh, the next thing is uh, really interesting and, and something that is a really good thing for us to do. New York Sun will pay $2,500 to the town of Delaware uh, when the town of Delaware applies for a unified solar permit, the streamlined solar permitting process. Uh, the Energy Committee recommends that we vote on a resolution at this meeting to apply for this as we get $2,500 simply for, a, for applying. All we have to do is apply for it. Um, so that's a, that's a very good thing. 
uh, what this does is uh, the, pro <coughs> the process provides the town with a working template in terms of permitting. It establishes a un uniform process which previously did not exist. Boy, was it confusing before. Every town did it differently. They were all based on all kinds of different stuff, different rules for every, I mean, it was crazy. But now they, uh, they have in place this uh, unified solar permit which streamlines it so it's basically a template for everybody. Easy, not, I mean, it's not an easy application uh, by any stretch, but it's, uh, at least it's uniform, so everybody knows what's going, it's the same thing for everybody, it's not a confusing thing. Uh, it takes the misinformation out of the previous process. It's now, <clears throat> it is now a clarified, prepackaged, and distilled practical props process. Uh, we are requesting this evening to vote a resolution to initiate an application for the Unified Solar Permit. Um, uh, another potential source of additional revenue for upgrades is to appeal to legislators who are interested in cost-saving benefits that a solar installation will provide. Uh, legislators uh, have funds for different projects that they like, that they're interested in, so there's a chance we could explore that, you know. Uh, an energy performance consultant, EPC, is paid by the contractor. Uh, he is an engineer that oversees the construction, engineering, and procures the supplies for construction. Uh, they write the RFP, the uh, request uh, uh, for proposal, and send it out for competitive build bidding, which is a really interest. that's a very important fact uh, that they're sending it out for competitive building. Uh, bidding because uh, there are programs out there, uh, Solar One, which doesn't, they're not competitive bidding. You go straight for them and if there's nothing competitive, you don't know what kind of deal you're really getting uh, because it's not put out for a competitive bid. So that, that doesn't seem to be a, a very practical thing to, you know, you want to have a competitive bid out there. Um, He's an engineer that oversees the construction, engineering, and procures the supplies for the construction. They write the RFP and send it out for competitive bidding. They study the proposals and report back to the town of Delaware with the recommendations. Their function ultimately is to guarantee cost savings that will be more than what it costs uh, the town to do their upgrading. So that's an important fact because they have to guarantee that, you're, that the town is getting very substantial cost savings that would, uh, in fact, pay for the upgrades that the town would need uh, to um, to uh, uh, basically comply with the climate smart, climate smart uh, pledge. You know, um, in in all aspects, they have to demonstrate and guarantee cost e efficiency. The energy savings can pay for the upgrade work being done for the whole system. He is paid by the winning solar provider as part of the proposal bid. As a result, the town is relieved of expenses related to such essential expertise. Solomon Energy is an EPC that works on projects of this size and scope. You know, this is not a huge uh, project uh, compared to many other pro many other towns or cities that are, uh, uh, you know, doing the same kind of thing. So this is a smaller size, and this particular company, Solomon Energy, uh, 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 SASD. It, recommended that these guys are pretty good. They work with this uh, uh, size of, of project and... Uh, Matt, there's a folder there if you want to yeah, pass we, it to I the Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, yeah, Jenny, if you want to talk about something to uh, uh, They might be a candidate for our EPC search. They may also be good to work with regarding our audit as well. We are, in addition, checking out more resources for energy audit. We, that's, you know, that research is still going on right now, but this company is, uh, it, it seems to be that they could be a very good candidate to interview. So a recap of our request for this town board meeting is to vote on two resolutions. Apply for a flex tech audit through NYSERDA, and number two, apply for the unified solar permit through New York Sun to receive the $2,500. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, we ju I just went over this, uh, just to submit the propane gas usage and oil usage, you know, uh, that's, uh, so thank you for your commitment to the future financial and climate smart improvement for the town of Delaware. Thanks so much for your commitment. It's great. Right. Now, yeah. I have one question. It's really good. Uh, yeah. I'll probably the others, but uh, it indicates and I should have paid fifty percent of an audit. Mm -hmm. What does an audit cost? That's well. I'm not. You know, when I was talking to S.A. Carol Ward, you know, at S.A.S.B. She had uh, mentioned something in, in terms of, well, if the audit was something like $2,500, $2, they would pay for 1250 you know. So 
in fact, what she did was she told us, you know, we could apply for the uh, $2,500 for the unified permitting thing, and we'd be ahead of the game, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know specifically what an audit for us would be. Just don't know. But what we want to do is... Well, well I would, could, could so, But this is important. Let me just try to answer that, because I want to really, you know, clear that up. Uh, if we were to just go for an audit, only do an audit from a guy, from a company that only does audits, you know, uh, we would have to pay. If we go with the EC, um, EPC uh, contractor, which is a really good thing, uh, we've heard, and this is the Solomon Energy, uh, we believe that they do the audit also, which is included in the package, and the provider uh, for the, uh, install the installer, you know, uh, he pays this EPC contractor. And the EPC contractor is an engineer. He really, these guys have a tremendous expertise. So if we can get the audit included with the whole package, that's even better, you know, because uh, the engineer would know a whole lot about what has to be, um, you know, upgraded, how to go about upgrading. And we listened to a web, both of us, uh, Judy and I listened to a webinar today about the, um, the LED lights. Unbelievable how much um, money the town can save on just changing out to LED lights. Like a fantastic webinar, so I want to explore that. So there's a lot of ways. Okay. Well, you know, know, I'm just my own, and I'm not. I don't want to throw any cold water because I, I want to keep it hot. Right. But I, we're. I, I don't like the open-endedness of not knowing what that price could be. I mean, oh, you I mentioned twenty five hundred. Could be five thousand. Could be ten thousand. Agree with you. Ab you know, absolutely. So right. maybe Mr. S I, I say Mr. Solomon. Is, is that his name? No, Jeff. No. Jeff. Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe, will, maybe with those guys. They will do Jeff. Conrad, I spoke with him, Solomon Energy. They will do the flex tech audit and it won't cost us anything. And I asked him, what's the worst case scenario if the, if you find out that the town isn't, you know, a good site for this? Then do, does the town have to cover it then? He said, no. He said, we absorb it. So what happens is who the person, the, the fee is paid for by the solar provider that we end up picking. So, so they will do this. I mean, all yeah, the information is right here. That, well, that's the and thing. they will come and they will do a presentation to the board and Absolutely. explain to you exactly yeah. how it's done. And I, could, I think and I gave, that's, you know, that's definitely a way to go. They need you know, to what? give us something in writing because sure. we can't right. act on and, something. And yeah, the open-endedness of, of, of <clears throat> that kind of resolution is a little something. I don't think, yeah. I don't know. That's okay. But, but, but we, yeah, we need a lot more information. I think it's a good maybe Maybe I could talk about this. this is a good Definitely. Jeff, uh, yes. yeah. I'll call him. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very I will easy. call him. And, uh, yeah. You guys did a lot of work on this report. Yeah, I know. When, when you talk about an audit, what exactly are you auditing? The cost of energy, the cost of fuel oil, the cost of propane, or each and every light? light bulb on the streets. Everything. Everything. How you can go in. all the money that you save on this particular uh, uh, you know energy saving pro uh, project, everything that you save, you can be putting into, you know, changing out the lights. And that, you know, once it's changed out, it's changed out. These LED lights that we just learned about this morning, at least I just learned about uh, it was just amazing. Um, they the maintenance, they're just about maintenance free. I mean you never have to change and like you just don't have to change them. They're fabulous on so many of the, uh, they're, they, it's a cast of white light. It's uh, just a whole bunch of reasons why the LED lights are fantastic. But the really fantastic thing is they just, they don't use hardly any energy compared to what's up there right now. So just changing that out, if you just change that out, the energy usage goes down like remarkably so. And that money that you save for that, you could be putting in insulation or you know what I mean? You could you could I do mean, other, and that's what the audit does. They come around to the buildings, you they him look any at the information on us, like uh, I didn't have some of this data. Not yet because it that. wasn't complete, but I okay. can now. Okay. So um, you know we can. I we would can suggest send that you do that, and and then and I'll give it a week or so, and I'll call. Yeah. Because okay. I'd like to talk to him, and I, maybe I could get a, one of the other town board members to. Thanks. So we don't have to wait till next month. Is perfect. Month. Yeah, Good. that's way okay. perfect. And, yeah. uh, uh, I think that's a way to go. I don't want to. It suffices to say, though. I mean, we're we're not throwing cold water on. I just don't want to pass a resolution that's so open ended. But the other, yeah, but the uh, the unified solar uh, uh, permit, that's a good one because you get the twenty five hundred dollars just for applying. I mean, it's 
Kind of almost like a no brainer, you, you know. Do that $2, well, you, can't you don't have to do anything. You, you get the twenty five hundred dollars. You can yeah, use it for anything you want. On, would be special. Solar stuff. I mean, on the I don't. Yeah. Well, well maybe. I know. I, don't know I was told they give you the twenty five hundred dollars. I was told that they they're not telling you what to spend it on. This is what I was told. Maybe I was told something well, that's we not correct. Well, we would only spend it on something. That, I mean, <laughs> we're not going to spend it on. Uh, yeah, Christmas, Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think Mike. <laughs> no, what, what I'm getting at is, is if LED lights, if if they're so good, and I understand, I hear they're 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 good. Why hasn't this been done? Why didn't the electric company go around? And it's very expensive. It's a capital. It's, it's a capital. Very expensive. expensive. I can tell you, you know, the Delaware Valley Job Corps is they have a project this winter. They're gonna they're going to LED lighting, and they make a lot of other uh, energy saving things. So uh, it's not it's not just us that are looking at this. There are other people. A lot. But there is a capital Chester, cost to it. It's incredible what's going on in Westchester. They're going gangbusters on this kind of thing. You know. I mean, but there is a capital cost. cost. For and, and uh, that's what that's the stuff that we have to study. Right. But that's the trade. You know, you, you save a, a ton of money, and so you're going to be putting it into uh, energy saving investment because it is an investment. Once you put it in, it's not going anywhere, and you don't have to spend money on the energy anymore. You know, because it's uh, you know it's just that cost savings there. So you know, there's a there's a bit of turnaround in the first first going off. You know, you save the money, you put it into something, but in fact, you know, and plus. There's a lot of other, uh, we're looking into a lot of other resources for getting grants or just all kinds of things, you know, maybe slush fund from a legislator or something. There's a lot of different resources for money that you can look into that you can't get it all from one source, unfortunately. <laughs> you, know, you can't well, push a button or I, I call somebody up. For it's this, from many different you know, sources. Solar permit, but I'd like to do it after Mr. I keep calling Mr. Solomon. His name is Jeff it's something. Jeff Conrad. <laughs> Jeff Conrad. After I speak with him, okay? Sure. Uh, okay. Let's make sure that we do it in a, in a correct manner. See, the other thing I'm curious about too: LED lights. What's the cost comparison of an incandescent light, or a fluorescent light, or a sodium vapor light, or an LED light? And do you like, just screw these things in, or what? I think it's like you have to change. You have to change the, uh, the unit. The, yeah, the unit. The, 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 as I said, there's a capital cost to the Yeah. And the LED lights cost about 10 times more than a regular. But there's no problem. there's no yeah. maintenance. They last like right. They, they last a long time. They just last a long time. You need to do a cost analysis to, see, right. to find out what the. Yeah. Well, that's what the. That's right. what yeah. this guy's all. That's what the audit. That's, that's the why, definition that's why of the I'm audit. Not yeah. That's the definition. These small, I guess they're small. Fluorescent light bulbs are like uh, little squirrely things that you put in any socket. You know, they're supposed to, to last. They're actually fire hazards. There have been houses burned down because of that transformer that's in there. And the other thing, when they break, now you got a mercury hazard. So that's not all what it's cracked up to be either. You don't have mercury with LED though. But LEDs don't. No, there's, don't they don't have any, any light compared to that. They don't but, that issue and you know a lot of uh, towns there are a couple of towns in, in Westchester that are definitely going for it and they they show a before and after in the PowerPoint you know and you know the the lights that we have out there are, are the uh, the orange light and you can't yeah. policemen can't really see what color the perpetrator was wearing because everything's orange you know but the LED lights it's, it casts a white light and you can it's very much more visible yeah. things are very much more visible you can see where you're going better you know. Anyway, there okay, is a great I way to go. contact this guy. Okay. I, I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't think I want to wait a week. I'm just going to contact him and uh, and maybe set up an appointment. Sounds really good. And when it, when that happens, I'll be glad to ask you guys to. Sure. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, great. Mr. Solomon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appreciate your efforts on it. Yes, very much so. Uh, okay. Before you guys can come up with any com or comments about uh. my. Uh, UDC rep. <laughs> there we go. Falling below. I went and printed them out this way instead of that way, so it's smaller. But anyhow, 
if you can see right over here, that little red line is where we are, and it's way below the long-term average or the long-term observed mark. So we are getting lower and lower and lower, although this, this is as of Friday. So we had some rain, I think. Wasn't it Saturday we had some rain? So yeah. it might have changed. But uh, it's, it's lower than it has been the whole year, if you look at that little red line mm -hmm. right here. And Tess will have one up here. You can have mine when it's over. You want to really take a look at it. To give you an idea uh, about the storage, um, the total storage in billion gallons is 155.7 billion gallons of water. And that includes the Cannonsville, Perpacton, and Never Sink reservoirs. And that represents a total capacity for these of 57.5%. So the water is very low. And there's a little trepidation. Are we going to have a snowpack that will bring it back for us later on in the year? So you can take a look at that. Uh, UDC um, had their regular meeting last, uh, what was it, Thursday, this Thursday. And uh, it was interesting because the National Park Service had invited some of the uh, higher ups in the National Park Service to come up and they, they did a natural gas tour. They went around into Bradford County and Susquehanna County and they toured the facilities uh, of what's going on over there. And, th and they made a quite a nice presentation uh, at the UDC meeting to uh, tell us what they observed and so forth. That was a good thing. Other than that, there's not much going on. It's getting near Christmas time, you know, holiday time. And uh, they're going to have their, their uh, last meeting this month, the uh, committee meeting. And then next month starts a whole new year. So that's... All I have to say about this time, it was a very okay. short one. All right, I, I'm we'll have council comment after. Yeah. All right, I have my own report. I, I have a few things. Uh, you may recall that when we bought the property last year for the new highway department, uh, there was, we and we agreed to put a covenant in that deed so that we wouldn't have a transfer station. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You remember that? Yep. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> well, we made a promise and we have to keep it. So uh, Kenny came up uh, with the Declaration of Covenant Restriction, and I, but I would like a, a motion to move that so we can get that done. We made a promise to the guy, the na our sure. neighbor. Yeah. It's our neighbor now. And I'd like to, and if anybody want to see it, I'll make the motion. Uh, I'll be glad to yeah, show it to you. We need though. to do it. Huh? We need to do it. <coughs> I'll make the motion. Okay. Second. No second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I'm just going to give this to you, Tess. Okay. And I'll sign it tomorrow, I guess. I guess uh, I'm going I'm to uh, go to council comment for a moment, and then I'm going to come back and finish my report, okay? Uh, if anybody have anything to say? <laughs> 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 I know it sounds canned, but... Uh, you ready to hear me? Yeah. I'm quack, 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 ready for quack, you. Quack, quack. <laughs> December 5th, 2014, Mr. Ed Sykes, Supervisor, Town of the Delaware, 4 Main Street, Hortonville, New York, 12745. Dear Supervisor Sykes, this letter is to advise you that as of the 31st of December 2014, I will resign my position as a councilman for the Town of Delaware Town Board. As most know, Donna and I have sold our home in Hortonville, and I have now completed my obligation in cleaning out the barn and outbuildings of our former property. It is truly amazing what one can accumulate over 62 years. <laughs> <laughs> Having lived in New York all of my 74 years and in the town of Delaware for the better part of 62 years, it has not been easy to make this decision to leave. However, 
change comes to us all. And Donna and I have come to the conclusion that this is the right time to downsize. Although we no longer own our wonderful home in the town of Delaware, we still own 85 acres of land here. So we still feel part that we are part of that which we have loved for so long, the people of the town of Delaware and its beautiful land and borders. The young folks who have taken over our farm love this area and the land as we do, and we are so very grateful for that. As for me, I have been more than honored to serve the town. In 1997, I was asked to serve as the town's representative on the Upper Delaware Council by the then supervisor, William Moran. Seventeen years have passed, and it has been a pleasure to represent our town in this partnership, helping to conserve the Delaware River and to protect private property rights of those who live in the Delaware River corridor is a tall order. The Upper Delaware Council and the NPS have done so by adhering to and by following the river management plan. It has been a wonderful experience to be part of this. Having been appointed to feel a vacancy on the town board by Supervisor Jim Schutzauer and subsequently by the trust placed in me by the people of the town of Delaware. It has been a distinct honor and pleasure to serve them as a member of this town board. I can't say enough about our town board and our supervisor. It is really a pleasure working with them all. None are out to push a personal agenda and all have the good, uh, the good of the town at heart. And to all elected officials, and to those who work for the town of Delaware, to all those who have been appointed by the town, hired by the town, and to those who volunteer their time for the town of Delaware, I am so very grateful for what you do. In all humbleness, I say to you, thanks for the memories. Respectfully yours, Harold G. Ward, Jr. Thank you all. I know it was emotional. For you. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the town thanks you. Thank for you all very much. Service. Service. Uh, I've been blessed to live here yeah. and be among the people that I love. Um, we knew that this was going to happen soon. We yep. didn't know when. Neither did I. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I have to accept the, the, the letter. I can't thank you enough for all the good that you've done. Now, you've been my, you've been my deputy, and you've been a, mm. uh, a, a good advisor to me, and you've really helped me. So, for that, I thank you also. Bless you and the whole town. Thank you. Uh, accepted with deep regret. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, The supervisor's report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I talked to Hal. I mean, I, I knew he was going to do this tonight, and, uh, and it points out a couple of things. First of all, uh, I need to appoint a deputy. Now, his resignation is not until the end of this month. Yeah. And what I would like to do is appoint Al Stepick as my deputy uh, on on the first of January. Going forward, um, and there, there's a host of reasons why I want to get this done tonight. Is because, not the least of which is a resolution to uh, appoint uh, Al as uh, in our depository institution at the bank. In my absence, uh, somebody needs to sign checks, perhaps, and so uh, I'm going to ask one of you to uh, make a resolution. Uh, that Harold be removed effective the 31st, and that uh, going forward that Al will be appointed. Yes, I'll make that motion. Okay. Uh, John? I second. Second by Cindy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah, Harold, it's with, it is with regret. Thank you. 
Can I fund that Christmas party now? I don't have anything else uh, unless someone else does, but we do have new business. Uh, we have a resolution to reappoint Paul Hendershot to the Sullivan County Fire Advisory Board. Uh, this is an annual appointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was our representative last year. Right. Or, or currently, uh, can I get somebody to make so move? Okay, second. John is seconded by. I'll make yeah. it. Okay. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. He's currently our chief now, isn't he? President. 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 Okay. In <laughs> uh, the next a bit of business we have to do <coughs> is uh, January. Uh, our meeting is the 14th, 14th mm -hmm. of January. Our next meeting. And at that meeting, I'd like to also uh, do our um, reorganizational meeting. And I don't know, should we do it quite at 6.30? Yeah, I think no, we don't have that here. much, really, because no, it's we a lot here. Yeah, but 6.45. Six, six, six uh, 6.45, and then we'll have our regular meeting at 7 on the 14th. <coughs> I need a motion. I'll make the motion. Second? Second. Al seconds it. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, I have nothing else, so I, I need another m motion to ex to uh, accept the abstract. Got to pay the bills. Yeah. So move. Second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now it's time. Public comment? Maybe next month we'll have somebody here that's not making a report. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we got to have the reports. <laughs> I'll make the coming. motion. I will make the last motion. Okay. <laughs> to adjourn. Okay. Second, Second to that? Second. Now, all those All in right. favor? All right. Okay. Mal will be back for the, with the, another report.